Um, thank, you, thank you. I hope you can all hear me. Um, thanks for inviting me for this weird occasion. Uh, I've, I've delivered a talk like this many times, but never quite so briefly. So I'll try and be brief. Um, to condense what I do, it's about zombie politics. And I've been pondering how, why I've been doing it for so long. And this is a very early cartoon I drew in 1980, believe it or not. So I'm getting on a bit now. I'm 67. I was 29 when I drew this. I was young. And it was the first time I'd ever been to a Tory party conference and in Brighton. And it felt, this is how it felt. It was like walking with the zombies. So zombie politics has been very important to me right from the start. And here we have the, it was the, you remember the famous phrase, the lady's not for turning. You turn if you want to. And I saw it, I was alive, I was there looking up her nose and that's what it was like. It just felt like being amongst a gathering of the undead. And so I developed this sort of theme and narrative of the Tory party, the zombie party, the self-servatives. I've always loathed the Tories and Thatcher. I spent my lifetime hating Thatcher, but it's pointless because she's gone now. So, um, Anyway, this is how Thatcher, as she would have liked to have been seen. This is Thatcher, as she really was, I would say. Um, this is how she developed her image over time. Because politicians develop before your eyes. They change their image. And you try and work... I'm, a, I'm drawing them every day. I try and follow what they do. And she darkened her hair, lowered her voice, spoke more deliberately. She never actually said that, but anyway. That. Um, but she became this weird figure. And there was something about her eyeballs that impressed me. Um, this is from 83. She became more and more sort of strong. She was playing up to the image of the Iron Lady. This was something I think that it may be the, somebody in the Soviet Union called her the Iron Lady wearing Churchill's trousers and she played up to that role quite deliberately. Um, what I went for was the eyeball. She has these staring left eyeball and a kind of hooded right eyeball. And that's, um, that's it really. I can surf through the Thatcher years which went on and on forever in my memory but uh, I think there was 11 years of it. But this is towards the end. She'd introduced the poll tax. She was in, well, up shit creek, literally. It was doing her day, doing her in. Uh, she was 20 points behind the poll. The poll tax was the most ridiculously unjust tax you can imagine. Um, this originally had a speech bubble which said, in the words of St. Francis of Assisi, moo moo quack quack, ba ba cock a doodle doo. Um, and this is... Just the end was coming now. Her party, even her party wanted her to go on. They realised she was dragging them down. The poll tax was doing them in. And they were praying for a tree to fall on her, which metaphorically it did a couple of weeks later when Jeffrey Howe delivered a withering resignation speech and shafted her and enabled Heseltine to leap in and uh, <laughs> challenge her to a leadership contest. And within a couple of days she was toast and it was it all happened before my eyes it was wonderful um this is i'd been doing a strip in the guardian since 81 but this was the first big one i did in the guardian um well, the one before was uh, that one then the second one was this one and it was a, a kind of one too i'm a comic artist i draw comic strips which might explain my working methods uh comics are a much sort of um disdained medium, you're looked down upon, you're the sort of lowest of the low, but actually you can do things in comics that you can't do anywhere else. You can mess with language, you can mess with the images of politicians, um, you can do what you want with them. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> Thatcher was finally gone and it was, and there's the proof of the mad eye, the only photographic proof I ever saw of the mad eye, there it was. And then some years later, she actually did depart this world. So that I did that the day of her demise. Why is this pit still open? Uh, and she was followed by this guy, um, a very different kettle of fish, as you can see by the framing. Uh, the, the lampshade is, is, is overcoming him in this sort of battle of the charisma. And, uh, he was a very non-charismatic policy, uh, very different to Thatcher. Who, and here he was. I started drawing him in with his underpants over his trousers because he was a kind of crap Superman. That's why I did it. A super useless man. And it sort of worked. Um, but 
it went on for years. So the, the, he won, he surprisingly won an election in 92 against all the other people expecting Labour to win, but they didn't. And he got a tremendous vote and he won. And it was the de most depressing day of my life when I did that cartoon. But we, we rule you, we fool you, we, ta we thicken you, we sicken you, we tax you, we, we sack you, we're outrageous, but you vote for us. Anyway, um, but the rest of the major years were a kind of slow death <laughs> over five or six years. And in the end, why bother drawing him? Just draw the pants. Let the pants do the talking. <laughs> I forgot to time myself, so I have no idea how much time I've got left. That was five minutes. Oh, wow, I'm, I'm really surfing here. Right. Uh, well, <laughs> onwards, well, he went, and onwards, on came Blair. The, uh, the next one along. Uh, tried drawing him as Ban Bambi, but because of his extreme youth, he was in his 40s, for God's sake. Um, but I couldn't quite get a handle on him until I caught a glimpse of him. I was at a party conference watching him, and uh, suddenly I got this flicker in his eyes, and I made a note of it, and that's the little sketch I did. And he's got an angry, staring left eye, and a sort of smiley, twinkly right eye. <laughs> and if, once you get that, that's the kind of equation behind his likeness. So I sort of went, and I realized, where have I seen that before, that mad eye? Ah, oh, yes, of course, it's, it's, it's Thatcher. There was an umbilical link between Tony and Thatch. Um, and it was indeed, and she, she came up with a memorable phrase, my legacy is safe in his hands. And that was a real kick in the teeth for John Major, who she by this time was hating. She'd, she'd sort of brought him on as a kind of um, uh, protege, but by this time she realized he wasn't a true believer in her, so he was done for, but Tony was. So anyway, the major years came, <laughs> the slow death carried on, uh, and then finally in February 97, he launched a very long election campaign, and boom, Unterhosen Dammerung, which I think is correct German for Twilight of the Underpants, and the election campaign took place. Ah, and then finally the pants sank into the Thames and were gone. Uh, well, there he is in his full preachy finery. He was, you know, there's, an, as I say, an umbilical link between him and Thatcher. He didn't, there's so much of Thatcherism he didn't challenge, so much of the zombie politics of Thatcherism that he accepted wholeheartedly and he took Labour by the scruff of the neck and wrenched it rightwards. Anyway. Uh, here's a, a late Bambi, a rather more evil Bambi, because he got this appetite for foreign affairs and foreign adventures. Um, but there he is. <laughs> and then, he, um, oh, I've jumped, I, 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 I realise I've missed out Gordon Brown completely. I'm sorry, Gordon. <laughs> I edited you out by accident. <laughs> this is Gilray. It's not me at all. I can't, this is a wonderful cartoonist called Gilray, who was working in the late... 18th century. He, he's the first political cartoonist. He was the first truly political cartoonist who established the pattern of the way we all work in political cartooning. He turned those figures, those characters of that era, into cartoon characters, into comic characters, which he manipulated and devastated. But this character is not probably one you'd know. It's the Duke of Clarence, who was the brother of the Prince Regent, the son of George III. Now, he had a very sort of um, fruitful relationship with an actress called Dorothea Jordan, and they have a splendid large family. Unfortunately, his official marriage to Queen Adelaide was fruitless. He became William IV after his brother, George IV, died, and that's, that's William as he would have liked to have been seen, not by Gilray, I should hasten to add. And this is his direct descendant from the wrong side of the blanket, Dave. That's why he's so upper class. That's why he's so posh, because he's, he, he just is. He's just very, very posh. Here he is, David Cameron, young, gifted, and plump. <laughs> he wants to be Tony because he, was, he, he grew up, his political, came to political maturity in the shadow of Blair. And he wanted to be Blair, because, but he didn't have the ears, the eyeball, or the teeth. Apart from that, he's perfect. I, I took an exception to him because these posters appeared around the country in 2010, just coming up to the general election, of this head sticking up at the side and saying, I'll cut the deficit, not the NHS. Sounds rather like that to you, because it? Um, so I just unrolled this condom and rolled it over his, rammed it over his head, and it sort of worked for me. I don't know why, but God knows why. You have to trust your instincts in this game. 
But the thing about, he, he once actually came up to me and said, what's this condom thing all about? <laughs> it's, never, it's never happened to me before with one of my victims. And I said, well, oh, well, it's to do with the, your extreme youth, he's a lot younger than I am, and, um, and, the, and the smoothness of your complexion, which is sort of partly true. I could say, because you're a dick, but he doesn't have any visible hair follicles, as you can see. <laughs> anyway, the wonderful coalition arose with, between him and the cardboard cutout Clegg. Took us to new dimensions. I'll have rushed through this, and there he is. Uh, permanent austerity, you know it makes sense. And then election 2015, when uh, by a process of decapitation, the Labour Party were slaughtered north of the border. And uh, actually, they went up slightly in the south of the border, but uh, they were slaughtered. Anyway, and triumph, victory, wonder. Sunshine wins the day, 2015. He gets an absolute, he gets a majority. Wonderful. Joy, joy, joy. And then the story about the pig, where he put his member. <laughs> well, it might have been true. I, I wish it was, but who cares? And then he, he, he's, lo he's given, the, he's offered the public this ludicrous referendum option. So that his ne next couple of years are spent going around Europe, trying to be tough, trying to appear tough to his Eurosceptics back home and getting nothing in return. And so he's, uh, well, naked at the conference chamber, if you like. So that, that became an abiding theme. <laughs> And it ended up with, uh, do I believe that at the end of this we can come together and accept the result? Absolutely I do. Well, of course, it was a divisive, hideous campaign. This was the worst moment, which was uh, Farage's nasty post, which said breaking point, but I've warped it slightly about this flood of uh, Middle Eastern types approaching Europe. And this was day of the election. The price of European holidays has increased, official. It's a version of an old Don, Philip Zeck cartoon from the war. And he was gone. That was it. That, that, that result did for him. So he was toast. Poor sod. What does the Labour Party choose to do? Instead of taking advantage of the situation, he decides to form a circular firing squad and enter another bleeding leadership contest. Because, of course, by this time, Corbyn was the leader. Fat lot of good it did them. Uh, Corbyn. You have made the Labour Party completely unelectable, says Banana Man. Uh, but of course, the beneficiary was, was one Theresa May, one, a woman defined by her shoes. That's not me, that's not cynical me doing it, that's the way she likes it to be. There she is, showing off her shoes to the camera. Um, but there's something weird about Theresa, she is a strange character. Securing the zombie holocaust, already there's the appearance of the lumbering zombie holocaust and the dog's Brexit, which of course is her sole reason for living, uh, creating a hostile environment and invoking a dog's Brexit, which she was suffering from at the moment. So I started depicting her as a, weirdly, there were uh, evil clowns were in the news, so I started doing her as an evil clown, I just don't ask me why. <laughs> it sort of worked for me for a while. Uh, and then I did her as, uh, let's hear it, oh, she was asked, what, what, what sort of Brexit do you want? <laughs> red, white and blue Brexit, let's hear it for the red, white one. What the fuck does that mean? Right, I better rush. <laughs> there she is, zooming off. Here's, oh, this is the 2017 election. I am what I am. Uh, strong, stable leader with the best possible Brexit with Theresa May. <laughs> Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Everything has changed. She, so here's the zombie reborn. And of course, Theresa May is the ultimate zombie politician. Here she is, coming out of the depths. <laughs> so I, I ran through that too quickly there. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh at my own jokes. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> I love work out. Don't you wonder? You wonder yeah. And there she is, launching herself. A, a terrible film called The Mission, but it had one fabulous image, which is somebody being crucified and launched over backwards over a falls. Um, so I. Turned it to Westminster, darling, I'm home. Nothing has changed. Hang mm, talk. No game is getting in a clear deal. Take this thing off the table. And here's the undead coming back from the dead. This is Jeremy Corbyn. Good old Jeremy. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, you know, I, I think Jeremy's a good thing. He's an old lag like me. He's got a beard. He's lefty. Good for him. Anyway. I know he's getting a shit press at the moment, but I try to do my bit. Anyway, thanks for, I think I'm getting very near the, have I got uh, three seconds? <laughs> That's the last slide and I've got there in time. Uh, 
uh, my com yeah, I mean, Theresa is the ultimate zombie, and that's the thing. And it seems to be nothing's changed in politics since I've been doing it. So thanks for listening. I'll...